What is the one and only way to get revenge on your narcissistic abuser, on the narcissist and the borderline? It's something called narcissistic mortification. And you need to understand what this is if you want to get complete, total revenge and also vindication and freedom for yourself from the incredible abuse that you've suffered from these very tragically, extremely toxic people. I talk about what I did to heal myself in my book, How I Survived My Borderline Girlfriend, which you can get on Amazon, Kindle, and Audible. You can go to audiobooks.thunderwizard.com. But I'm here to tell you that all of the videos that tell you all of the ways to get revenge on your narcissist, especially videos that say five ways or ten ways or seven ways, that's all nonsense. I'm here to tell you you're being conned by all of those videos. That's why they're so popular. These videos are designed to appeal to actually your codependent victim mentality. It co-signs your codependent victim mentality. It's the reason why it's popular is because you're, you are understandably full of rage. You're full of anger. You're hurt. You want to get back at the people that hurt you. You want to make sure they don't hurt anybody else. You want to, you want to get your power back, your sense of self. And so all of these, the vast majority of them, I, mean, I want to say 99% of all of the videos and all the channels out there that talk about getting revenge on the narcissist and the narcissist this and why the narcissist realizes that you're the real one, you're being conned. They, they are clickbaiting you. They know that you have pain and they know that you will do anything to have somebody listen to you and acknowledge your pain. The problem is they don't give you a solution. I'm gonna give you a solution. There's only one solution. And as it turns out, it's the best one. It's called narcissistic mortification. How do you mortify a narcissist? Mortification is a great word, by the way. Mortification means to make dead. So you can't get any, you, you can't disempower somebody more than making them dead. We're not actually talking about murder, not, nothing physical. I do not, I'm not, I'm not telling you to do any, any kind of violence. But what I am telling you to do is, the, is what you can do. The only way that you can make the narcissist feel dead inside. And in fact, if, you're, if you do it well enough, they might even off themselves. Because this is the nature of the narcissist. So... Let's look at the Wikipedia definition of narcissistic mortification. Narcissistic mortification is, quote, the primitive terror of self-dissolution triggered by the sudden exposure of one's sense of a defective self. It is death by embarrassment. It's a horrible way to die. And this is, by the way, everything the narcissist and the borderline does, every single thing that they do is out of fear of this exact thing. All of the abuse that they do, all of the manipulation that they do, all of the love bombing, all of the splitting, all of the irrational behavior, all of the knowingly hurtful things that they do, all of the hurtful things they do that they don't know that they're doing, it is all coming from terror. This is a perfect way. The primitive terror of self-disillusion. And this happens when you have been severely traumatized to the point where you feel you're going to die. Let's remember what creates a narcissist and a borderline. By the way, please stop annoying me with stupid comments. I know you don't mean to, but there's so much misinformation out there from seemingly reputable sources. Borderlines and narcissists are created exactly the same way. They uh, experienced extreme trauma, neglect, abuse, and it was so extreme that it literally almost killed them. So as I've said many times before, infants, if they do not get love in the crib, 
If they do not get love from the moment that they're born, they will die. There, for hundreds of years, there have been all kinds of horrific experiments that have proven that if you take care of a child, you feed it, you clothe it, you wipe its butt, you keep it warm, you keep it out of physical danger, but if you do not interact with it, the child will die from lack of attention, lack of love. The borderline and the narcissist are people who got just enough, just enough attention that, it, that they didn't die. But they are on the verge of dying every single moment. That's why they're so desperate. That's why they're so destructive. That's why they're so angry. That's why they're so needy. That's why they're so extremely codependent. They need things outside of them to give them value because they never got it. And that's what uh, narcissistic mortification is. They are on the verge of narcissistic mortification every single second. Now you'd think, well, if they're that close to narcissistic mortification, then all it takes is for me to do one thing or say one thing or one look. No, because when you're that close to death, then what happens is you are in an extreme state of trauma and all of your self-defense mechanisms come in. Borderlines and narcissists are nothing more than extreme self-defense mechanisms trying to avoid the death that they believe will come to them if you narcissistically mortify them. If you reveal to them, if you make it unavoidable to them that they see that they are defective, that they are not what they say they are. They are not these grandiose, in the case of the borderline, the perfect worshiper of God. That's, that's really what the borderline wants. Borderline wants you to know that they are the perfect worshiper of God and therefore God will raise her up to his status and she will be queen of the universe because she will be so perfect, she will sit back and get the love of God. The narcissist is the opposite. The narcissist is God who wants you to be the perfect worshiper and thereby he gets his supply. And the worst thing you can do is to reveal undeniably to the narcissist and the borderline that their grandiosity is meaningless, that they are frightened little children. They are defective and vulnerable. I use the word defective in quotes. It's just that they feel they're defective. Now the question is, how do you do this? How do you mortify the narcissist? And this is why you go on to YouTube and watch the five ways to, to get revenge on the narcissist, the five ways to, the seven ways, the ten ways, why the narcissist realizes you're the one. It's all nonsense, all of it. Why? Because you don't exist. In order for you to get revenge on somebody, to which revenge is you, you take control. You are, you are superior to them. You defeat them. In order for that to happen, you have to exist. You don't exist in their mind. This is the biggest problem that people have who have been damaged by narcissists and borderlines. All of your rage, I just, you know, I narcissistically mortified a codependent the other day by uh, responding to his comment and explaining to him that his rage, his, his desire to get, get revenge on the, you know, his borderline that had conned him. I said, that's, that comes from your childish narcissistic needs yourself. That I was mortifying his narcissism. I was holding up the mirror and showing that all of that bravado about, I want to get revenge on my borderline, that all comes from mommy never loved you. He didn't like that. So I'm not going to do that anymore. By the way, that's why if you go to askmike.thunderwizard.com, that's a great way for me to answer your question because I'll be less likely to mortify you. <laughs> but if you leave a comment on my channel, I'm going to want to mortify you. Because that's the only way to heal, by the way. For borderlines and narcissists, the only way that they can heal is if they are able to be mortified and then take the actions towards the healing. Borderlines seem to be much more open to that. 
That could be because of the way they actually borderlines do interact with uh, external reality. They try and paste their narcissistic fantasy onto external reality, but they do interact with it. Narcissists don't. Narcissists uh, always end up, they always end up in prison. Have you ever noticed that? They are actually manifesting their, their inner reality. Keith Renary, I keep using him. He's a great example. He's going to end up in prison for the rest of his life. And he's going to live with his own internal fantasy. They always end up destroying their lives no matter how brilliant they are. They end up alone. Um, borderlines actually end up, you know, um, feeling mortified. That's why 10% of them commit suicide. Mortification to make dead. They, they get mortified. But if you can get mortified and then take the action towards healing, you can heal. Narcissists, it's very different, very difficult, I should say, because their self-defense, they're so highly defended that it's, it's impossible for them to even get aware of themselves. And even those that do get aware, I've never seen any of them uh, heal. They, they're all still incredibly toxic. Um, even the ones, even the experts that go around doing wonderful things like revealing narcissistic uh, personality disorder to the world, they're still extremely toxic people. Same things with uh, same thing with so-called cured borderlines, borderlines who say that they have cured themselves from BPD. They're in denial. They are also, if you get involved with them or interact with them on a personal or professional level, extremely toxic and incredibly psychopathic. The borderlines that heal are the ones that are willing to do the work every day. Go to DBT therapy regularly, get, go to group therapy with DBT, and do the DBT exercises every day. And even some, even though the 12-step programs are not really made for personality disordered people, if they, you, they work the 12 steps with that, I've seen a lot of borderlines really get some healing and be able to have relationships. Don't get your hopes up. It takes at least eight to 10 years before they're capable of managing their symptoms. But we're talking about how you're going to get your revenge. Let me first just acknowledge that your feelings are valid. You have been victimized. If you've been in a relationship with a narcissist or a borderline, they have victimized you. They, this is, by the way, if you want to understand uh, why you feel so horrible in the relationship is because they actually project onto you their narcissistic mortification. Their goal, their unconscious strategy, unconscious means they're not aware of it. Their conscious strategy may be different, but their unconscious strategy is, if I can make this person feel the way I feel, then I won't have it anymore. They think that it's a disease that they can give to somebody else and they won't have it. I had a friend in high school who um, we laughed about it, but when he was a kid and he got uh, the flu, he would then take uh, his sister's toothbrush and brush his teeth with his sister's toothbrush because he thought if he could give her the flu, then he wouldn't have it anymore. And the only thing that happens is they both end up having it. So the, the borderline and the narcissist are doing the exact same thing. They're trying to narcissistically mortify you, which is why, if you think about it, this is how you feel. The primitive terror of self-dissolution, triggered by the sudden exposure of one's sense of a defective self. It is death by embarrassment. This is what they do to you. It's called devaluation. What it means is that you come into the relationship with value self-value. They tell you in the love bombing, they tell you how valuable you are. That creates a narcissistic bond because you are regressed to the point of the grandiose entitled infant. You are regressed to the point that they never got to experience. So what's happening on an unconscious level, the borderline and the narcissist, what because they don't understand it, they're projecting onto you the infant they never got to be. But their desire is they want that. The feeling that they give you when they love bomb you, when they are entraining you in the beginning, where they're bonding with you, and they do such a great job at it because they know how to regress you to that infantile, grandiose, 
entitled state where all you are are feelings on the deepest level and they give you this feeling that they are your mother and they see you and love you completely and unconditionally. That triggers you if you've been damaged, if you have pain within you, because you can't get involved with a narcissist or a borderline if you don't have some wound for them to, some, some identity wound that goes all the way back to your infancy, your childhood. Um, and so what they're doing is they're making you feel in the beginning the way they never got to feel. And it's a way of, of, of living out a fantasy through you. So that's why they're so invested in it. They get off on that. Now, what they're doing is they're get, they, once they do that, then they create this bond. And now they've made themselves indispensable to you. You can't live without them. That's why when they, now, now, now they're in a position to devalue you. They mortify you. That's when the abuse comes. Either they, they leave you, they abandon you, they start to slowly, if it's a narcissist, they'll start to slowly erode your self-confidence until you get used to being abused and devalued. They start to tell you that your value only comes for what you do for them. The borderline says your value comes in regulating my emotions and being my God. I shared with you an experience I had with mine where she basically said um, that what I want from you is to, to put lightning power into me and make me feel loved. And if you can't do that, then you're no good to me. I mean, it was just crazy. I was going, you realize I'm just a human being, right? And I, you, I saw in that moment that she was deluded. She had made me into some kind of divine being that was going to have the ability to not have any needs and have all power and all love be the source of all power and all love and give it to her. It was, it was quite, it was, it was a mortification in, in and of itself. I became aware, of, wow, I am not God. <laughs> I can't do that. Even God can't do I said that to my ex-wife when my ex-wife came to me with a list of needs. And one of them was, I want you to greet me at the door when I come home from work. And I want you to make me feel loved. And I want to believe that you feel happy to see me. And I said, not even God can do that. Because it's true. Uh, so narcissistic mortification, your, your borderline, your narcissist, wants to uh, first give you the feeling that you are this happy, fulfilled infant, which makes you absolutely bonded to them. Then they start to devalue you. And they start to point out to you all of the ways that you are flawed, the gaslighting, the, the victim blaming, turning everything around on you, giving you impossible tasks. Now you are narcissistically mortified. Then when the discard comes, when they finally discard you, that is the ultimate narcissistic mortification. And then you're not done. Once they narcissistically mortify you for good, they discard you. It doesn't let you off the hook. It's not like, okay, they've discarded me. Now I can get better. No, you're in trauma pause. You're in that intermittent reinforcement stage where you're in between being uh, devalued and being rewarded because you learn that to be loved, you must be devalued. And if you allow yourself to be devalued or if you devalue yourself enough, if you mortify yourself enough for them, it's, 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 they're getting off on watching you mortify yourself so that they don't have to do it. That's why they get off on it. They get off on seeing you being mortified. And then they reward you because that's their fix. They think they have this feeling of release because they see you in pain. And then they project that onto you that they don't have it anymore. And you're even supposed to tell them, I'm doing this for you. You're perfect. I love you. And they go, okay. They give you that one little cookie, just like a trained dog, they give you a pat on the head, they tell you they love you, they take you out to dinner, they have sex with you, maybe they love bomb you a little bit, they do whatever they have to do to then keep that bond and increase it. And here's the sick part of it. 
every time that they uh, that they devalue you and then reward you, each time they reward you, you become a little more bonded to them. You don't get less bonded to them. So this is another thing that's so confusing about it. Because in normal situations, when somebody's abusive to you, and we're not dealing with, you know, full-on uh, personality disorder, you know, master manipulation, you're dealing, you know, when somebody devalues you, you start to get less and less attached to them until finally you go, you know what, this friendship isn't working out or this relationship isn't working out. When the narcissist or the borderline does it, they actually go deeper within you. Each time that they reward you, they make you feel like they've learned more about themselves and they've learned more about you. And now I will finally love you. Before this was all just practice and I wasn't getting it right, but now I've got it right. Now I'm really going to love you and you believe it. That's why the final discard is the worst one and you are completely, totally mortified. You are made dead. There's nothing left in you. That's why it's so horrific. So, the only way that you're going to get revenge on your borderline or your narcissist is if you do that to them. If you narcissistically mortify them. So, why don't I have a video telling you the five things, the ten things, the seven things? Because if your motivation is to harm them, if your motivation is to get power over them, to get control over them, to make them feel bad, if you have any motivation to make them feel any way whatsoever, guess what? You're deluded. You think that you exist in their mind. The only way that you can hurt them is if you exist. Now, there's no shortage of ways to trigger them into a rage. There's no shortage of ways to trigger them into feeling bad. And it's real simple. Just don't give them what they want. But if you're doing that because you want to elicit a feeling out of them, guess what? You've turned into a narcissist. And they are far more, they, their negative feelings aren't going to drive them away. Their negative feelings are not going to make them capitulate. They're not going to give up and surrender. Oh my God, I realize now you're the one I always loved. And what that, you won't come back to me? I know that's your, that's your fantasy. You're not going to be able to stare them down and frighten them. You're not going to be able to, I mean, this guy right here, the guy, this guy ended up dying, this character. He ended up dying because he couldn't, he wouldn't let go. He wouldn't surrender. They're like that. They would much rather die at your hands. What you don't understand is, borderlines especially, but borderlines and narcissists are trying to turn you into a psychopathic uh abuser. It would make them happy if you could out abuse them. My brother, who I based this character on, my brother, uh, later on in life, what he did is he actually was tried to provoke me into a physical confrontation. Because he knew I'm a trained martial artist. He knew that I, if, if he got me enraged and got me to physically fight him, that I would destroy him. He knew that. And his fantasy was that he would push me to the point where I would lose my temper and then I would physically attack him and then he would be in the hospital and then he would say, you see what he did to me? My little brother, I'm his little brother, by the way. My little brother is so abusive. He's taken everything from me. He did this his whole life. Tried to get, if he couldn't physically... Uh, intimidate me, then he would try and make it look like I was doing something to him. I took away all of his uh, possibilities. I got all of the attention. I got all of the breaks. He got none of them. None of those things are true. So you think that by taking your rage out and finally making them realize that you were the one, you were the one that was good to me and all these other people... You know, I saw a video, uh, I was, you know, scrolling through, and of course, all I see is all this nonsense. And there's this one narcissist channel, you know, get revenge on the narcissist channel. And this woman talks about how your narcissist is something like stepping down, you know, is, is downgrading. 
You know, you're the real prize that they're walking away from, which is nonsense. They don't see you as a prize. They're, you're just a stick figure. They discarded you but kept the fantasy and they find somebody else. They're in love with the fantasy. They're not in love with you. They could care less about you. The fact that you fulfilled their narcissistic agenda better than somebody else doesn't make you the one that they're going to miss for the rest of their... No, they, you're nothing to them. Time to wake up. So the only way, finally get into it, the only way to mortify the narcissist is to not give a crap. And here's the problem. I'm telling you that and you say, yeah, I don't care. I don't care. I haven't seen my borderline in, in th three weeks, two days, 24 hours and 67 minutes and, and two seconds. I, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. You're full of crap. I know you care. How do I know? Because I've been there. Once you get in that intermittent reinforcement trauma pause, you can't help but love them because they expertly, expertly manipulated you into a needy infant who can't live without their mother. I know that because if that wasn't the case, you wouldn't have stayed with them. You wouldn't have put up with any more abuse. The fact that you stood with them and got uh, abandoned and split on and discarded and hoovered, it means that you bonded to them on the deepest level humanly possible. So don't try and BS me that you don't care about them anymore. Especially don't try and BS me that you don't care about them. And how do I know that? Because look at how rageful I am. I'm so full of rage. I hate them. I would never get back together with them. Well, the opposite of love is not hate, my friend. The opposite of love is apathy, not caring. I mean, not, not caring in, in a sociopathic way. I don't mean by that, you know, where people don't exist. Not caring in the sense of, yeah, I know they exist and they're a human being and um, they're very damaged, but I just don't have any reaction to them one way or another. I don't want them in my life. I'm going to keep them out of my life. It's the best thing for them, best thing for me. But I don't miss them. I'm not angry with them. I have nothing but detached compassion. And don't lie to me, those of you out there who think you have it. I know you don't. Many of you don't. And I can tell by your comments, by the way. So the one way to do that is to do the one thing. I teach you how to do it on this channel. Put a little effort, look for it on the channel. I've got videos called The One Thing. On many of my videos, at least probably 75% of my videos, I tell you exactly what to do. And I tell you how to do it in this book, How I Survived My Borderline Girlfriend. So the point is, how can you get to the place? where Not where you try and convince yourself that you don't need them or want them or that you're not either obsessed with them or infuriated at them. That's not what I mean. Where you really get to the point where you just don't have an opinion one way or another, and yet you're still connected to all of your feelings. The other thing is there are people who are completely numb. They've checked out. They're, they're in so much trauma that they're not even aware of their feelings. And they say, well, I don't have any anger towards my borderline or my narcissist. That's just because you're numb. That's not the same. To be fully connected to all of your feelings and yet have no intense feelings towards the borderline or the narcissist one way or the other. The only way that can happen, my friends, is doing the one thing. I tell you how to do it in my book. I tell you how to do it on this channel. If you have a question about your relationship, a lot of people come on and leave comments and they believe that, for instance, somebody just left one. I, you could make a three-hour video based on my personal experience. Well, if you think that your personal experience is something that would be interesting to me, to the channel, if you have a question, if I haven't addressed something about your BPD relationship, because mine is a little bit different, then go here to askmike.thunderwizard.com. Send me a five minute or less video. You can explain in detail your situation so I understand it. I will then put that up on a video and I will respond to it for at least 10 minutes. People will, we will all benefit from it. Go to askmike.thunderwizard.com. I'll even do 30 minute sessions with the right person. 
and I'll put it up on the channel, askmike.thunderwizard.com. Audiobooks.thunderwizard.com, How I Survived My Borderline Girlfriend is my book. I recommend you get it. I tell you how to heal. That's it. You can go on, you can go on YouTube and look for Shadow Glory's uh, Final Fight. And um, if there's still DVDs out there, you can get it. You can get it. My, big, my big movie break that never happened. Um, anyway, that's where I got this picture from. Thank you, my friends. I wish you all the best. We'll see you next time.